Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Talk Radio. During today's episode, I wanted to dive into shadow work, what it means, recognizing our patterns, and much more. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'm really excited to offer it to you. So first of all, shadow work, the term shadow work was coined, or excuse me, the term shadow, our shadow self, was coined by Carl Jung, which means the unconscious or hidden aspects of our personality. So I wanted to discuss what the shadow consists of. It's essentially the suppressed or denied aspects of ourselves. It's the aspects of ourselves that we feel shame about, so we simply pretend that they don't exist, such as jealousy, manipulation, um, when we're judgmental of others, that sort of thing. There are desires and beliefs that we suppress. When diving into shadow work, you're increasing your self-awareness, your emotional intelligence, and creating personal growth. And now that I've accepted and integrated the shadow aspects of myself, and we'll, we'll talk more about what integration means, I'm a more real, well-rounded person. Before, when I first got into meditation and spirituality, I was reading a bunch of nonfiction books by authors that I love, Eckhart Tolle, Wayne Dyer, um, Byron Katie, uh, Ram Dass. I'm trying to think of all the lovely authors that I've read, but I I noticed kind of a common theme, also Abraham Hicks, but I noticed a common theme that they seem to be saying that we should be striving to not only be present and in the moment at all times, but also that experiencing negative emotions, not all of those authors, but some of them, that experiencing negative emotions was a bad thing and that we shouldn't be experiencing them. We should be positive and, you know, happy all the time. And then when I wasn't in the moment or positive and happy all the time, I felt shame. And so something that I wanted to do when I wrote my own book, and I'm going to read a part of it today. I'm going to read a few chapters, not a chapter, a few paragraphs for you um, where we talk about shadow work in my book. But when I wrote my own book, I wanted to make sure to tell people that, first of all, being present in the moment is just unattainable for most people, you know, unless you're enlightened. And that's okay. It's it's finding moments of mindfulness throughout our days, which create greater joy and happiness in those moments. And it's also realizing that we're human beings with a very large spectrum of emotions, and it's okay to experience those emotions. And not to feel shame when we're experiencing negative or difficult emotions. And so, you know, then that led me into my shadow work journey and really diving into the shadow aspects of myself. And it was difficult. This is a very, this isn't easy work, you know, and some of the things that we deny about ourselves, that we push aside, that we, that we cast judgment on a lot of times casting judgment on other people for doing those things, which is really just a projection of what's going on inside of us. And the fact that we are pushing that down and shaming that part of ourselves was super hard to own up to at first. And I'm going to talk about some of the main things that, you know, I felt shame around and that I've now come to accept as being a part of myself and working to integrate those things and that I am, as are we all, the light and the dark. And that's okay. And that's a beautiful thing. So some common examples of shadow aspects of ourselves, shadow patterns are projection and judgment. So a common projection that I see is when somebody calls somebody else rude, right? That's not to say that that person wasn't being rude, but when we call, actually, I want to stop there because this is where I wanted to read a passage of my book to you guys to help kind of better explain this particular, this particular concept. So my book is actually, um, broken down into three parts. So the first of it, the first part of it, we kind of dive into um, disconnecting from the ego because I thought that was really important to understand the ego mind and the ego voice. If you don't already have, you know, 
a basic understanding of that and then we dive into shadow work in the second section and then the third section is just tools that I've learned on my awakening journey and my healing journey that I share with you guys. So this is in the shadow work section. It's the first chapter entitled shadow work. So I'm going to jump around a bit but I'm going to read some of the paragraphs which help to better explain this topic. So there are many aspects of the mind one of which we can refer to as the shadow self. This, ac this aspect of ourselves is hidden and concealed since we are unconsciously aware of the reasons for its expressions, aka our judgments, until its motives have been illuminated. In analytical psychology, the shadow self is the unconscious aspect of the personality. It is the hidden or unconscious expression of our personalities that we, that the conscious mind is not aware of and does not identify with nor accept. Our shadow self is the unknown and hidden side, including, including all aspects of ourselves that we deem unworthy or shameful, such as certain emotions or characteristics. Our shadow self is the disowned self. Instead of accepting and holding compassion for the parts of ourselves we find shameful or unworthy, we deny those qualities within ourselves, and instead, we point them out in others. Let me give you an example. When we call someone rude, or in our mind perceive someone as being rude, that is because rudeness is a quality we are also capable of expressing, and we don't like that quality of ourselves, that part of ourselves. So we subconsciously suppress the shame we feel about that part of ourselves, and we project that shame onto another person. This isn't to say that person wasn't being rude or is capable of being rude at times. However, if you are often aggressively pointing out other people's rudeness, as an example, it may be an opportunity for self-reflection and to consider asking yourself, one, am I also capable of being rude at times? Two, might I also react the same way or have reacted the same way in a similar situation? And three, is it hard for me to admit to ever being rude because it brings up feelings of shame? Note that this is normal when we first learn to accept and integrate the disowned parts of ourselves. Just as you are unaware that the negative judgments and assessments you project onto others are quality that exists within you, the same is true for the traits you admire in another person. If you admire their kindness, compassion, strength, courage, or perseverance, you would not be able to perceive those qualities in another person if you weren't also capable of expressing those same qualities. So I'll stop there and it goes into more of that. But essentially what it's saying is when we're aggressively judging somebody else for something, you know, I used rudeness as an example, it's an opportunity to self-reflect and ask, but am I also capable of experiencing the same thing that they're going through or the same thing that they're expressing? And most likely the answer is yes, but often we don't look at it from that perspective. We simply cast judgment on that person for being bad, bad, bad. When we also do it, we also have that quality inside of us. And when we begin to look at it from that perspective, there's compassion and there's empathy for ourselves and fellow human beings. And so a lot of our unresolved issues and unacknowledged aspects such as jealousy, you know, judgment, being manipulative, is an opportunity for self-reflection and to ask yourself, why am I judging that other person when those qualities are also within me? So next time that you're experiencing jealousy, as an example, I want you to try and ask yourself, why am I jealous? Most likely it's one of two reasons. It's either because they hold something that you also want or that you feel like they're a threat to you in some way. But I'll give you an example in my own life. I have experienced jealousy towards people who um, are pursuing the things that I at one point in my life wanted to pursue and I wasn't or want to pursue now and I just haven't gotten there yet. Sometimes I'll see them doing that and I sometimes immediately get that little ping of jealousy 
And so in those moments, I've started to stop and ask myself, well, why are you experiencing jealousy? Most likely the answer is because I I want the thing that they're experiencing. I want to experience that too. So now I've started to tell myself, then go after it, do it. There's no need to experience the jealousy. And, And once we accept and understand and bring awareness to those aspects of ourselves, we're then easier, more easily able to hold compassion for ourselves and for others, which then just kind of helps to disintegrate and integrate the shadow. So there are various methods and practices to help you kind of explore shadow work. Um, In my book, I have a lot of, you know, questions like, what I just read to help you explore shadow work. There's also guided meditations. I just taught one this morning. You're welcome to access it on YouTube. Um, I think it was just called Diving into the Shadow Self, and we did a little bit of visualization to help us do that. And um, I also wanted to talk about what is integration. So integration, when somebody says integrating the shadow self, the shadow aspects of ourselves, integration just essentially means that you see and accept the shadow aspects of yourself when they come up. So you're becoming more aware of when those judgments comes up, when those judgments come up, where they're coming from, why they exist, that sort of thing. It's like when I got that ping of jealousy and I became aware of why I am experiencing that and then working to shift it. And another thing that I want to talk about is when we're diving into shadow work and we're starting to notice those those, the judgments that we hold not only for ourselves but for others, um, sometimes we can fall into the trap of, you know, and I've experienced this in my own life from um, a person that was in my life who essentially said, I have a shadow and that's okay. Um, and that is true. It is okay to have a shadow and it's good to acknowledge those parts of ourselves. However, It's not okay to use our shadow aspect of ourselves as an excuse for poor behavior or an excuse to hurt others, right? When we're noticing that we're judging somebody else or we're noticing that we're experiencing jealousy, it's an opportunity for self-reflection. It's not an opportunity to say, oh, well, you know, I experienced jealousy, I'm experiencing judgment and that's okay and I guess I'm just not going to change it. You have to take that additional step to saying, okay, not only why am I experiencing, why am I experiencing this, but how can I work to change this? How can I work to accept this parts of myself and realize that my judgment that I'm casting on another is really a judgment of myself and then work to release it. And then over time, you don't experience those judgments anymore. And if they happen to come up, and I've talked about this before, we have well ingrained thought patterns, right? Like sometimes we're so used to seeing something and then judging it that our mind is going to go down that same thought pattern again. I call it path through the forest, paths through the forest, which I talk about in my book. But so sometimes our minds will immediately go there. You know, I might immediately have that ping of jealousy, but it's creating the awareness in our minds and that practice of creating the awareness that will eventually start to create new neural networks in our brains and you won't be as judgmental towards others. You'll start to notice that in those moments, your mind will start saying good things, not only about yourself, but about that other person. Now, a lot of times when I see a woman who's doing something that I also want to be doing, I feel joy for her. I feel excitement. And I'm like, hell yeah, girl, do your thing. Because I'm not only excited for her, I'm excited for the future version of myself who will also get to experience that. And that thought process wasn't there years ago. That, you know, conclusion that my mind came to wasn't there years ago. The conclusion that it came to was immediate jealousy or judgment. So when we work to allow the, the shadow aspects of ourselves, again, there's compassion, not only for ourselves, but for others who are experiencing that same thing. And I, I just want to say one small thing. This is not excusing, like during our everyday lives, there are common experiences that we come across where we find that somebody's being rude or, you know whatever it is, and we find ourselves judging them, this is not 
excusing, this is not me excusing physical or emotional e abuse. However, in our common everyday lives, we're constantly judging people and it's an opportunity for self-reflection. So I hope that this episode helped you. I also have a small announcement. So I know I got, I know I had previously told you guys the title of my book, but unfortunately I found out that a woman recently, um, published a book with the exact same title about two months ago. So now I am having to reshift and change titles, but surprisingly, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my new title. The new title is Don't You Effing Dare. And I'll explain what that means. But at first, when I realized that somebody else had published under the same title, it was deflating because I've had that title for like two years or I've had that title in mind for like two years. And I thought, oh, now I have to pivot, you know, but I realized the more I've le I'm leaning into this new title, the more I, I love it even more. I really do. I feel like it, it better encapsulates me and what I'm trying to express in this book. And so I'm always one I've always been somebody who believes that everything happens for a reason and that if we're being redirected, there's a reason. You know, if a door is closing, there's a reason. There's because a better door is about to be opened. And I truly believe, even in this scenario, that that's what has happened and that this new title will be, you know, even better at encapsulating everything that I want this book to, to bring to the world. Don't You Effing Dare refers to a... I call it a disruptor phrase. It's something that I use when I find myself, for example, either, you know, casting judgment or participating in a worrisome thought or judging myself. Like if I'm looking in the mirror and I'm judging something about my body, I'll, if I, once I become aware that I'm participating in that, I'll say, don't you effing dare. And it's my way of kind of disrupting that thought. And then I work to bring it to a more positive and truthful thought. So my book not only dives into, you know, the ego voice, understanding the ego voice, diving into shadow work, but also helping us to shift negative self-talk, shift, you know, judgment of others and get it out of worrisome thought cycles and all of those things. So I don't believe the original published date was supposed to be um, July 7th, this Friday. I don't believe it's going to be published on that day, but hopefully it will still be published here in July. If not, I'm leaning towards 8-8, so August 8th, but I will keep you guys updated on when the final release date will be. But thank you so much for joining me. If you guys didn't already know, I am also a one-on-one -on -one mindfulness coach. If you're interested in a session with me, please go to my website, meganshiree.com. I'm also a meditation instructor on the Insight Timer app, and I teach a free live meditation there every Sunday at 10 a.m. You can watch it through the app, or you can also watch it on my Facebook page. And if you enjoy these episodes, please like, share, comment, review, and subscribe. It helps us to reach more people and expand this conscious community. And may you be happy, may you be well, may you be joyous and at ease, sending you infinite love and light, and until next time.